In this demo, we're just going to do a quick review of using Performance Monitor to look at real-time performance. There are different ways to open Performance Monitor. From the Start menu, you can select All Programs, Administrative Tools, and then Performance Monitor. I tend to open it from a Run command, so just Start Run and then type Perfmon. Of course, you could also put a shortcut on your desktop. Once you're in Performance Monitor, by default, it shows the percent processor time counter, but I typically want to look at additional counters. So to add those, you're going to use the green plus icon up at the top. So we'll go ahead and add a few counters, and we're going to get into the actual counters in more detail. But for now, let's just look at physical disk, and we'll look at average disk seconds per read and per write and I just use the control key to highlight multiple counters. I don't want to look at this for total, for the total value. I really want to look at it for specific drives. And in this case, I'm just going to select the C drive. I'm going to go up to memory and we will add available megabytes. And then I want to add one SQL Server counter. And I want to point out that I've got two instances of SQL Server installed on this machine. And that's important because when you're selecting counters, you want to make sure you have the right instance. So I have a 2008 R2 and a 2012 instance. And if you've ever done this, you know that it's really frustrating to select a counter and then wonder why you're not seeing any values for it. And it's because you have the wrong one selected for the wrong instance. So we're going to add batch requests per second. And now we've got this information, these counters, and let's generate some load here. And so I'm just going to run some PowerShell scripts that are going to go behind the scenes and create some activity for us. All right. So within Performance Monitor, we should start to see activity pick up. And depending on how many counters you've selected, understanding what a value is can get a little bit tricky. I tend to highlight the active counter. So there's a highlight icon up here at the top. And then whatever counter I have selected below shows up in bold. So this is nice. I get an idea of what percent processor time looks like a little bit better. I can see that I have a lot of available megabytes. And this number is above my scale. It's above 100. And so in that case, what I might do is look at the values down here at the bottom, which give me the last value, the average, the minimum, and the maximum. Batch requests per second, those have definitely started to jump. And so again, I'm selecting the counters that are of interest to me. Now some people want to look at the actual numbers and they don't want to have to flip between the counters at the bottom to see what the last value was. And you can use a different view in Performance Monitor, which is the report view. So we just go up and we change this to the report view and that will show the current values. And again, your preference depends on how you like to look at that data. I tend to use the graph view. I know other people who really prefer the line view. Whatever works for you. So now that I'm looking at performance, there are different things that I can do with my display, which I talked about before. And I'm just going to touch on a couple of them because if you go into the properties, you'll see this is the properties icon up here, or I can right click and select properties. There are a lot of different tweaks that I can make. For example, if I don't love this green color, I can change it to a bright pink. But this is in the details, right? I really just want to look at my data. One thing I want to point out is that I mentioned before that by default, Performance Monitor only shows you the last or shows you 100 seconds worth of data. I can change this here. I typically don't. Again, I'm typically just looking at the last minute or two of data. That's what matters right now. But there are times when I've wanted to freeze a display, I've wanted to have something on the screen, but I still want to continue monitoring performance. And what you can do is you can actually pause. So we've got a pause button up at the top, and I'm going to freeze the display. Now, I want to continue monitoring performance, but I don't want to go through the process of selecting all of my counters again. And I don't have to. I can copy them using my Copy Properties icon. And I can go back and open up another Perfmon session. And within this Perfmon session, I'm going to go ahead and paste. 
with my paste icon. And now all of the counters that I had selected in the other window appear over here. Now to take this one step further, I had mentioned before that I can, I can set up Performance Monitor to open with the counters that are most important to me. So to do that, I need to have those counters selected and I'm gonna copy them again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to run and this time I'm gonna type perfmon forward slash sys. And the perfmon window that I get here is really pretty vanilla. I don't have all the other options but I do have the ability to paste my counters and now they all show up below. And so here's the cool trick. From this window right here, I can either close it or I can do a file save settings as, and we'll just put this on the desktop and we'll just call this perf and we'll save it. And we'll close this and we'll just minimize all of our other windows. So now I have this perfmon config file on the desktop. And if I double click on this, perfmon opens with those counters already selected. So this is what I mean when I say that performance monitor is just as fast as opening Management Studio and querying the DMVs. I've got it set up so that the counters that I care about are already there. And so when I have a performance problem, I double click on that file, on that perfmon sys configuration file. I open this up and I can immediately see what's going on, and then at the same time, I'm gonna open Management Studio, and I'm gonna pull my baseline information. And so we'll get to that in just a minute. Hopefully you picked up a few things here. Thanks for watching.